So hi guys, Mayong Adlaw. How are you doing with your math module so far? I hope you are doing great and enjoying while learning general mathematics. So just take a deep breath and relax. So for today's video, I am going to discuss with you module 4 of quarter 1, which is about inverse functions. By the way, I am Mr. Renato V. Priolo of Mambaling National High School of South District 3. So to start, this module is divided into three lessons. We have lesson 13, which is about one-to-one -one functions. Lesson 14, which is about inverse of one-to-one -one functions. And lesson 15, which is about the graphs of inverse functions. So before we start with our discussion, let us have first a short diagnostic test. I will give you five seconds to answer each question. So let us start with number one. Which of the following best describes a one-to-one -one function? A. For every x sub 1 and x sub 2 in the domain of f, then f of x sub 1 is equal to f of x sub 2. Letter B. The same y value is never paired with two different x values. Letter C. Two elements in the domain of f corresponds to the same element in the range. D. Each x in the domain has more than one image in the range. So your time starts now. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the correct answer is letter B. Let's proceed to number 2. Which of the following is a one-to-one -one function? A. A set of ordered pairs 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 8, 3, 27, and 4, 64. Letter B. A set of ordered pairs 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, and 5, 1. Letter C. A set of ordered pairs negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 2, negative 4, 5, 2, 10, 4. Letter D. A set of ordered pairs 12, 2, 15, 4, 19, negative 4, 25, 6, and 78, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the correct answer is letter A. Let's proceed to number 3. What is the inverse of y equals 3x plus 6? A. y equals 1 half x plus 3. B. y equals 1 third x plus 2. C. y equals 1 half x minus 3. And letter D. y equals 1 third x minus 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, and Five. So the correct answer is letter D. So to proceed, we have to find out how do we get the answers in our diagnostic test from numbers 1, 2, and 3. So let us have lesson 13, which is about 1 to 1 functions. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to Represent real-life functions using one-to-one -one functions. Determine the properties of one-to-one -one functions. And identify one-to-one -one functions using the horizontal line test. So before we go to our lesson proper, we have to review first what is a function because we will be talking of a one-to-one -one function. So we have to go back to a definition of a function. It says here, a function is a special kind of relation because it follows an extra rule. Just like a relation, a function is also a set of ordered pairs. However, every x value must be associated to only one y value. So therefore, a function should have a unique domain and every domain should not be paired to two different 
values in the range. So there should be only one pair for every domain. Another is, we have to review about a vertical line test or that is the VLT. This is a method to determine if the given relation is a function by creating an imaginary line across the graph. If the vertical line can hit two or more points on the graph, it is not considered a function. So, the vertical line test is used to determine if a given graph is a function or not. If the given graph is a function or just a mere relation. We just simply draw a vertical line across the graph and if that vertical line will cross the graph at exactly one point, therefore that is considered a function. Now to proceed, we have this example. We have this first graph and the second graph. So if we are going to draw a vertical line on this graph, Imaginary, this is an imaginary line, vertical line. If we are going to draw an imaginary vertical line across this graph, our vertical line will cross at exactly one point. In this case, we have this point here. And anywhere on the graph, anywhere on the graph, your vertical line should only cross at least one point. And if that is the case, this is considered a function. Now, on the other hand, we have this second graph. And if we are going to draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph, just say, for example, this vertical line, we could say that this line will cross the graph at two points. So we have this point here and another point here. So therefore, the vertical line anywhere on this graph will cross at two points points. So therefore, this graph is not considered a function. Now, let us consider this diagram. We have here set A and set B. So try to check the difference between set A and set B. So we have here set A, student paired to ID number, a car is paired to a plate number, and we have here a diagram 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 with an arrow pairing each values in both diagrams. The same also with set B. We have school to a teacher or school is paired to teacher, TV to channels, and this diagram here. So let us try to find out what is the difference between these two by defining a one-to-one -one function. So what is a one-to-one -one function? It says here, the function is 1 to 1 if for any x sub 1, x sub 2 in the domain of f, then f of x sub 1 should not be equal to f of x sub 2. This means the same y value is never paired with two different x values. So as you can see, if we are going to de define a function, in a function, the domain should not be paired to more than one value in the range. But in a one-to-one -one function, the range, this is the other way around. So the range should not be paired to more than once in the domain. So there should be only one pair of range or the value of the range in the domain. So we will discuss later what is the meaning of this definition. So let us try some examples of a one-to-one -one functions in real life situations. We have number one, the relation pairing a student to his or her learner's reference number or LRN. The LRN is also considered an ID number for students. So each student is assigned to a unique LRN. Therefore, there should be only one learner's reference number for every student. Thus, the relation is a function. Furthermore, two different students cannot be assigned to the same LRN. So, one LRN should be given to only one student. Or, one LRN should not be given to two students. 
Another example, a plate number is only assigned to one car. So meaning, there should be only one plate number assigned to one car. It cannot be two plate numbers assigned to one car or vice versa, one plate number assigned to two cars. So one is to one. So that is one to one function. Another example. This set of ordered pairs, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and 5, 6. So this is a one-to-one -one function. Why? Because every value in the range is paired to only one value in the domain. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So there should be only one value in the range that is paired to only one domain that is a one-to-one -one function another example we have this arrow diagram we have here one negative two and four and and if we are going to pair each number that is one is paired to three negative two is paired to five and four is paired to negative six so every value in the range is paired to only one value in the domain so this is considered as our domain and this is considered as our range so therefore this is the case this is a one-to-one -one function another example is the function or the equation y equals 2x plus 3 so in every output y here has a unique input x in the given set of ordered pairs Hence, this is a one-to-one -one function. What does that mean? This means that any value that is assigned to x will generate one value for y or a unique value for y. So these are examples of one-to-one -one function. So let us now proceed to examples which are not considered as a one-to-one -one function. What are these examples? For example, we have two different real numbers may have the same perfect square numbers. This means that a real number, two different real numbers can have the same perfect squares. For example, we have the real numbers 2 and, shall I say, positive 2 and negative 2. If we are going to square positive 2, that will give us positive 4. And at the same time, if we are going to square negative 2, that will give us the same number, which is positive 4. So therefore, this is not a one-to-one -one function. Another example are the real numbers, say, positive 5 and negative 5. If we are going to square positive 5, that is positive 25. And if we are going to square negative 5, that is positive 25. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. Another example is the relation pairing a person to his or her citizenship. This is not a one-to-one -one function because a person can have a dual citizenship. A person can be a Filipino at the same time can be an American. So therefore, this is not a one-to-one -one function. Another is a relation pairing a TV set to its channel. So one TV set can have more than one different channel. Say for example, one TV set can show channel 7 or channel 3 or any other channel. So therefore, this is not a one-to-one -one function. Another example of those functions which are not one-to-one -one functions. So we have here... This set of ordered pairs, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. So this is not considered a one-to-one -one function. Why? Because we have here a value for the range, which is 1, that is paired to more than one domain. We have this ordered pair, negative 1 and 1, and another ordered pair pair 1 and 1. 
So we have this range 1 here and 1 that is paired to negative 1 and 1. So therefore, this is not considered a 1 to 1 function. But this is a function but not a 1 to 1 function. Another is this diagram. We have this domain. We have negative 1, 0, 1, and the range 0, 1, and 4. And if we are going to look at the arrow, this is negative 1 paired to 1, 0 paired to 0, and 1 is paired to 1. So therefore, our 1 in the range is paired more than once in the domain, which are negative 1 and positive 1. So this is not a 1 to 1 function. Another is this function y equals x squared. As I've said earlier, we can have two values of x that will result to only one value for y. What are these numbers? Example, I have mentioned some examples earlier. So we can have 2 and negative 2. We have positive 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 squared is also 4. And at the same time, another example, we have 1 squared, which is positive 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is also 1. So this is not a 1 to 1 function. So to summarize, how do we identify a 1 to 1 function given a graph? If we are going to, if we are given a graph and we are going to determine if the graph is a 1 to 1 function, we are just going to use the horizontal line test. So this is the opposite of the vertical line test, which is used to determine if the graph is a function or not, while the horizontal line test is used whether the graph is a one-to-one -one function or not. So a function is one-to-one -one if each horizontal line intersects or across the graph at exactly one point. So meaning, if the horizontal line will cross the graph more than one point, that is not a one-to-one -one function. So let's say, for example, this graph here, we have the first graph, the second graph, and the third graph. If we are going, since this is horizontal, so if we are going to draw a horizontal line on the first graph, as you can see, the graph will cross at exactly one point. In this example, we have this point here. So anywhere on the graph, anywhere in the graph, the horizontal line will cross at exactly one point. The same also with the second graph. If we are going to draw a horizontal line anywhere on the graph, the horizontal line will cross the graph at exactly one point here. And the same also the third graph. So this horizontal line will cross the graph at exactly one point. So these graphs are examples of a one-to-one -one function. That is how to determine if the graph is a one-to-one -one function or not. We will just simply draw an imaginary line or a horizontal line across the graph. And if the horizontal line will cross the graph at exactly one point, therefore, that is considered a one-to-one -one function. So to summarize, the function is one-to-one -one if for any x sub 1 and x sub 2 in the domain of f, then f of x sub 1 should not be equal to f of x sub 2. Another, the function is 1 to 1 if each horizontal line intersects the graph at exactly one point. And all functions satisfies the vertical line test while all 1 to 1 functions will satisfy both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. Because a graph can be a function but not one-to-one -one function. So a one-to-one -one function should satisfy the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. So let us now proceed to lesson 14, which is about inverse of one-to-one -one function. So at the end of this lesson, you are expected to determine the inverse of a one-to-one -one function and identify the properties of the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. For example, you are given y equals 2x minus 1, and you are given the values of the domain. We have here our table of values. 
we are given the values of the domain negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, let us try to uh, solve for the values of the range using this function y equals 2x minus 3. So, let us start with the first value of the domain or the first value of the x which is negative 3. Now, if we are going to substitute this value to the function that is 2 times negative 3 which is negative 6, minus 1 will give us negative 7. So, in this function, if the domain is negative 3, the range or the value of y is negative 7. To continue, we have negative 2. Substitute in the function, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, minus 1 is negative 5. Then, for negative 1, that is 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. For 0, that is 2 times 0 is 0, then minus 1 is negative 1. Then continue, we have 1, that is 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. Then the domain 2, that is 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. And lastly, we have 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So as you can see, we have completed now the table of values using the function y equals 2x minus 1. As you can see, this is an example of a linear function. So, a linear function or the domain of a linear function are all real numbers. The same also with the range. These are all real numbers, meaning there are no restrictions in the values of the domain and range. Now, we are given f inverse of x is equal to x plus 1 over 2. Okay, so let us try to find out the ordered pairs. This is now the table of values given this function. So this is our original function, y equals 2x minus 1, and the inverse of this function is f inverse of x is equal to x plus 1 over 2. Now, since this is just the inverse of this original function, and we have this ordered pair of this function, so therefore, the inverse of this function shall have this table of values. As you have noticed, we have the domain, which is the values of x, and the range, which are the values of y. So, as you can see in the domain, negative 7, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5. These are the range in the original function. And at the same time, the values of the range of the inverse function, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. These are the values of the range in the original function. So therefore, the domain and range of inverse function is just the range and domain of the original function. So meaning, the domain of the original function becomes the range of the inverse function and at the same time, the range of the original function becomes the domain of the inverse function. So to illustrate more on this function, we need to find the inverse of one-to-one -one function. So how do we find the inverse of a one-to-one -one function? Number one, write the function in the form y equals f of x. Number two, interchange the variables x and y. And number three, solve for y in terms of x. So we will have more illustrative examples on this. So we will have here our first function. The function that I had given you earlier that is y equals 2x minus 1. So by the way, when I say y, that is just always equal to f of x. That's why if we are going to find the inverse of the original function, the first step that we are going to do is to change the notation f of x to the variable y because as I've said, y is always equal to f of x. So again, this is our function that I had given you earlier y equals 2x minus 1. So, this is the notation, f of x equals 2x minus 1. The first step is to change the notation f of x to y. So, therefore, this becomes y equals 2x minus 1. 
Next is to interchange the variables. This y becomes x and this x becomes y. So therefore, the function becomes x equals 2y minus 1. Then afterwards, we solve for y in terms of x. So when we solve for y in terms of x, we need to use subtraction property of equality here since this is positive. Or if we are going to eliminate negative 1 here at the right side of the equation, we use addition property of equality by just adding positive 1 here and positive 1 here. But since we use subtraction property, so we subtract x here at this side of the equation, so, so we will also subtract x at this side of the equation. So this becomes negative x. And since this is positive 2y, we will subtract 2y here. So we subtract 2y and of course we will also subtract 2y at this side of the equation. That's why we that's why this becomes negative 2y here. So, this is negative 2y equals negative x minus 1. And afterwards, we need to eliminate the coefficient of y here, which is negative 2. So, we divide, we use division property of equality. We divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. So, in this case, we can cancel out the negative 2. So, what remains in the function shall be y here. Since we have eliminated now the negative 2, so the variable y shall remain at the left side of the equation. And the right side of the equation becomes negative x minus 1 over negative 2. So this becomes f inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 2. Since these are all negative, we divide negative and negative, that is positive. And the notation becomes like this, f inverse of x to denote that this is an inverse function. So therefore, the inverse of f of x equals 2x minus 1 is if inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 2. So this function, this original function, the inverse of this function is this function. Again, we need to use this notation f inverse of x to denote that this is an inverse function. Okay, let us proceed to another example. For example, we are given this function g of x equals x cubed plus 5. Again, we are going to find the inverse of this function. So as I've said, g of x change this notation to y. So this becomes y equals x cubed plus 5. The next step is to exchange the variables x and y. So y becomes x and x becomes y. So we have x equals y cubed plus 5. And to solve for y, we need to use subtraction property of equality here. So we subtract 5 at this side of the equation. And of course, subtract 5 at this side of the equation. So this becomes x minus 5 equals, since we have already subtracted 5 here, so this becomes 0. So what remains at the right side of the equation shall be y cubed. And to eliminate the uh, exponent of y here, which is cube or 3, we need to extract the cube root. So extract the cube root at the left side of the equation and, of course, at the right side of the equation. Because whatever you do to the left side of the equation is the same thing that you need to do at the right side of the equation and vice versa. In this case, we can now cancel out the exponent of y and the radical. So... The remaining equation shall be the cube root of x minus 5 equals y. Or we can rewrite this function as y equals the cube root of x minus 5. And using the inverse notation, so that becomes g inverse of x equals the cube root of x minus 5. So, therefore, the inverse of g of x equals x cubed plus 5 is g inverse of x equals cube root of x minus 5. So that is how to get the inverse of a given function. So those are the examples on how to get the inverse of a given function. So now let us proceed to lesson 15, which is about the graphs of inverse functions. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to represent an inverse function through its graph and Find the domain and range of an inverse function. So let's take these ordered pairs as examples. So given the same function y equals 2x minus 1, 
Again, we have here the table of values from this function. And if we are going to plot this ordered pairs in the Cartesian plane, of course, since we are talking of the graph of an inverse function, we should not forget that the graph of an inverse function is just a reflection of the graph of the original function. And to indicate the reflection of the graph of inverse function, we need to draw the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is denoted by the equation y equals x. So whatever the value of y is the same value for x. So that's why we have here this line of symmetry. So the graph should always contain the line of symmetry for inverse function. So if we are going to draw the graph of this function y equals 2x minus 1 and we have these ordered pairs, so we will plot each ordered pair in the Cartesian plane with this line of symmetry. So let us start first with the first ordered pair negative 3 and negative 7. So we have here negative 3 and negative 7. So meaning this is our first point. Another is negative 2 and negative 5. So let us start with the x value which is negative 2 and negative 5. So this is our second point. Next is negative 1 and 3. We have here negative 1 and negative 3. This is our third point. And 0, negative 1, so this is 0 and negative 1, this is our point. Next is 1 and 1, so x is 1, y is 1, so this is our point. x is 2 and y is 3, so this is our point. And lastly, we have 3 and 5, so this is our 3 and this is our 5, so this is our point. Again, since this is a linear function, so meaning the graph of a linear function is a straight line. So these are the points given these ordered pairs in the table of values. Now if we are going to connect each point so we can have this graph. Again, this is now the graph of the original function y equals 2x minus 1. Now if we are going to plot the graph of the inverse of this function, we have discussed earlier that the inverse of this function is x plus 1 over 2. And these are the ordered pairs. So if we are going to plot these ordered pairs in the Cartesian plane. So again, the domain here becomes the range in the inverse function. And the range here becomes the domain in the inverse function. So the first ordered pair is negative 7 and negative 3. So, x is negative 7 and y is negative 3. So, the point is located here. Next is negative 5 and negative 2. We have here negative 5 and y is negative 2. So, the point is located here. Negative 3 and negative 1. So, the point is located here. Next is negative 1 and 0. So, negative 1 and 0. So, the point is located here. Another is 1 and 1. So this is our point, 1 and 1. Next is 3 and 2. So we have here 3 and 2. So we have here our point. And lastly, 5 and 3. So we have here 5 and 3. So this is our point. So we will connect these points. So this is now the graph of this function y equals x plus 1 over 2 or the f inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 2. So f inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 2. So as you have observed, the blue is the graph of the original function and the red line is the graph of the inverse function. Indicated in the Cartesian plane is our line of symmetry. As I've said earlier, that the graph of an inverse function is just a reflection of the graph of the original function. That's why we need to draw the line of symmetry. So to find the domain and range of the inverse function, so we have here our first original function, f of x equals 2x minus 1, and we have here our inverse function. So, as I've said earlier, that the domain of this function are all real numbers, and the range of this original function are also real numbers. So, that goes to follow, since 
whether we we interchange the domain and the range the domain and the range of this function is also real numbers and real numbers so there is no distinction both are all real numbers but if we are going to try another example for example we are going to draw the graph of this uh, rational function f of x equals 2 over x minus 3 now as we have discussed in a rational function a rational function or the domain of a rational function are all real numbers except that value that would make the denominator zero so meaning we have to find that value we have to find that value that would make the denominator zero and that value is not included in the domain so what value of x here that will that is not part of the domain so when you say not part of the domain these values of x that will make the denominator zero or that will make the whole function undefined in this example we have 2 over x minus 3 so it is very clear a value that would make the whole function undefined is positive 3 why if we are going to change x with a value 3 that is 3 minus 3 that is 0 so 2 over 0 is undefined so meaning positive 3 is not part of the domain so the domain of this function are all real numbers except positive 3 meaning positive 3 is not part of the domain so we will not use positive 3 as our domain so if we are going to draw the graph of this function let us find first some ordered pairs using any values of the domain except positive 3 say for example we are going to choose the value for x which is 3.5 that is 3.5 not 3 so we will substitute this value to the function we have f of x or f of 3.5 is equal to 2 over the value of x which is 3.5 minus 3 so that is 2 over 0 0.5 2 divided by 0 0.5 is equal to 4 so our first ordered pair shall be 3.5 and 4 we now have one ordered pair let us choose another value for x for example we choose positive 5 as the domain so substitute this 5 to the function so we have f of 5 equals 2 over this is 5 minus 3 so 5 minus 3 is 2 and that is 2 divided by 2 is 1 so our second ordered pair shall be 5 and 1 so this is 5 and 1 we now have two ordered pairs we choose another value shall we say we choose positive 2 we substitute this value to the function so that is f of 2 equals 2 over 2 minus 3 2 minus 3 is negative 1 and when we divide 2 divided by negative 1 that shall give us negative 2 so our ordered pair shall be 2 and negative 2 then we choose another value shall we say we choose x equals 0 so substitute this value to the function we have f of x or f of 0 equals 2 over 0 minus 3 so this is cancelled so this becomes 2 over negative 3 or negative 2 third negative 2 over 3 so the ordered pair shall be 0 and negative 2 over 3. We now have these ordered pairs. 3.5 and 4, 5 and 1, 2 and negative 2, 0 and negative 2 over 3. So let us plot these points in the Cartesian plane. For example, this is our Cartesian plane together with the line of symmetry so first and foremost if we are going to draw or plot the graph of the rational function we need to indicate first the vertical asymptote so our vertical asymptote is the value that is not part of the domain so as i've said earlier the value that would make the whole function undefined in this example is positive 3 so that value is what we call our vertical asymptote 
meaning that value is not part of the domain. So if we are going to indicate this value in the Cartesian plane, so that is x equals 3. So we have here our 3, so we indicate the vertical asymptote. This is our vertical asymptote. And of course, our horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0 or the x-axis because the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 0 and the degree of the denominator is 1. So therefore, if that is the case, our horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0 or the x-axis. Now, let us start plotting the points. 3.5 and 4. So let us locate 3.5 in the x axis. So this is 3, this is 4, 3.5 is in between 3.4, and of course our y is 4. So therefore our first point is located here. Next is 5 and 1. So locate 5 in the x axis and 1 in the y axis. So this is our second point. Another point is 2 and negative 2. Positive 2 and negative 2 for y, so this is our third point. Another point is 0 and negative 2 third. 0 and negative 2 third, that is less than negative 1. So approximately, our point is located here. So these are now the points, and after plotting the points, we will now draw the curve line. Okay, so this is now our graph of this function, f of x equals 2 over x minus 3. Now, how about if we are going to draw the graph of the inverse of this function? Say, for example, again, this is our graph for f of x equals 2 over x minus 3. Now, if we are going to draw the graph of the inverse of this function, so, what are we going to do first is, again, indicate the line of symmetry. Afterwards, we indicate the vertical and horizontal asymptote of the inverse function. Let us start with the vertical asymptote from the original function. So, our vertical asymptote of the original function is x equals 3. So, in the inverse function, this becomes the horizontal asymptote. So this vertical asymptote becomes the horizontal asymptote in the inverse function or the graph of the inverse function. So this is x equals 3. So our horizontal asymptote of the inverse of this function shall be y equals 3. So this is our horizontal asymptote from the vertical asymptote. Okay, since we are now talking of the inverse function. So the vertical becomes the horizontal and the horizontal becomes the vertical. So let us again refer to the original function. Our horizontal asymptote is the x-axis in this graph. So therefore, in the inverse function, this becomes the vertical asymptote. This is x-axis or that is y equals 0 so, in the inverse function, that becomes y-axis, or that is x equals 0. Okay? The vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote in the inverse function. Now, let us plot the points of the inverse function. So, let us start first with the first point here. So, let us start with this point here. We have 5 and 1. So this is from the original function. So if we are going to plot this one into inverse function, so we need to interchange the value. 5 and 1 becomes 1 and 5 because, as I said earlier, the domain becomes the range and range becomes the domain. So this is 5 and 1 in the inverse function that is 1 and 5. So this is x1 and y is 5. So this is our first point. Next is we have 3.5 and 4. So in the inverse function, that is 4 and 3.5. So this is our 4 and this is our 3.5. So the point is located here. Another is we have this point 0 and negative 2 thirds. 
So, in the inverse function, that is negative 2 third and 0. So, negative 2 third, so approximately that is less than 1. So, negative 2 third and 0, so approximately your point is located here. And lastly, our last point is 2 and negative 2. So, we get the inverse that becomes negative 2 and 2. So, the point is located here. So, now, we connect these points. We can now have this graph. This graph is now the graph of the inverse of this original function, which is f inverse of x equals 3x plus 2 over x. Again, the first graph is the graph of the original function, and the second graph is the graph of the inverse of this original function. Now, if we are going to plot the graph of the original function and the graph of the inverse function in one Cartesian plane, the graph will look like this. As you have observed, we have this line of symmetry, as I've said, because the graph of the inverse function is just a reflection of the graph of the original function. So, to continue, to find the domain and range of the inverse function, we will have this table. This is our original function and this is our inverse function. So, as I've said earlier, the domain of this function are all real numbers except 3 because 3 will make the whole function undefined. And at the range of this original function are all real numbers except 0. So, in the inverse function, we just interchange the domain and the range. So, in this case, the domain of this inverse function are all real numbers except 0. As I've said, any number that would make the denominator 0 or that would make the whole function undefined is not part of the domain. So, that's why all real numbers except 0 and the range are all real numbers except 3. So, before I go, I want to leave this with you. Mathematics is an art of human understanding and that is by William Paul Thorston. So, thank you and God bless.